Do you sometimes take a look at your Minecraft world and think, wow, this looks like shit. I wish it looked better. Well, then you've come to the right video because today I'll be showcasing over 30 build ideas, including some floating gardens, a giant crop field, a Subnautica style base, and even a torture chamber. So with all of that said, let's get into the first build idea. So this first one is a pretty cool design. We've got like these... Okay, the squares, let's be honest. So we got these two squares. We got like a lower one and then we got a higher one. We also have a staircase and a pathway that kind of connects them up as well. We've got a couple of composters on each of those as well. And then down here, we also have a little bit of a storage area too. Next up, we have just a more traditional farming method, which is of course, just a couple of fields. So in here, we've got this intricate kind of fence design around the place. You might actually want to uh, change these lanterns to be slabs instead. I don't really know why I did this. And maybe just add the lanterns on top of the fences as more can just quite easily jump over this. See, so yeah, I'm not sure why I did that, but yeah, just make sure to fix that up if you end up building this for yourself. But yeah, something that makes this look really cool is that we have like kind of a, obviously a fenced off area. And then inside here, we have multiple individual fields. These are also all broken up by some coarse dirt pathways, which look really cool. And at the end of all of these pathways, we have some composters as well. And they also have their own little lids too. So you can close them and open them and have them looking pretty cool. For the last farm design, well, not the last for the video, but the last for these first three, we have the hydroponic one. I've made quite a few hydroponic farms and uh, this one has probably got to be one of my favorites. I really love this light design, how we have these hanging chains and then we have some levers here that point in towards these end rods, which look like some fluorescent lights. Then at the back here, we have like a couple of shelves as well with more lights above those. And then we also have these kind of individual tables with a whole bunch of azaleas and we've also got a bunch of flowers around the place as well. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of blacksmith designs. The first one being just a simple standard blacksmith. All the next ones are a bit more interesting than this. Yeah, this one is definitely a really cool way to spruce up maybe a blacksmith that you have in a village that you're upgrading or if you just wanted to make a blacksmith for yourself then this is a really cool interior design for that. So at the back left here we have like our forge design and this lava spreads all the way out here into a cauldron as well. We've also got a water cauldron for you to kind of theoretically cool off your created items up here. We've also got an armor stand at the back with a couple of armor pieces on them and just a whole bunch more decorations around the place as well. We've got barrels and then also these are invisible item frames with items obviously inside them. There's a resource pack that you can get to make item frames invisible, which is uh, pretty cool. For the next blacksmith, we have a dwarven blacksmith. And this one is actually heavily inspired by old school RuneScape, which is one of my all time favorite games. As you can obviously hear, you can hear the old school RuneScape music playing right now and in a lot of my videos too. But yeah, so for this one on the back here, we have a whole bunch of shelves with just some neat decorations. In front of those, we have more decorations. Then at the back here, we kind of have like a mega like furnace smelting thing. We've got like a ladder to get up top here to put your items in. And then at the front here, we've got like these pipes that kind of connect up to over to these blast furnaces and then over here to like this handle. I don't really know what all this is supposed to be. I kind of just used the images from old school RuneScape as a reference. And uh, this is what I could come up with, I guess. Onto the next blacksmith design, we have one that's kind of in a cave. And this one one's meant to be kind of like an evil theme. And this one's actually based off of Dark Souls 3. I really love that game as well as Old School RuneScape. So I just wanted to kind of add that into this one as well. So at the back here, we have like a giant lava pool and that's feeding into these blast furnaces, theoretically. In front of it, we've got a single anvil. And then also around the place, we've got a whole bunch of details. We've got some chains hanging around the place. We've got some roots and also these supporting pillars as well. And now I couldn't really think of a final blacksmith design. So I just added in a kind of ruined one. This one's as if it's obviously been kind of in the middle of a war or something like that and it's just been torn to shreds. And yeah, as you can see, we just have like obviously remnants of a blacksmith inside of here. And something actually really cool about this is we have like this kind of water pool over here and that's as if it's been leaking out into the floorboards. And we've done that by using some stairs around the place to kind of snake the water around, which is really cool. Next up, we have a couple of starter base designs. The first one here being the glass variant. So out the front here, we have a nice pathway made of some coarse dirt and some dirt path. We've also got a couple of crop fields as well. And then at the front here, it's kind of like as if this has been built into the side of a cave or the side of a cliff or something like that. We've decorated the front by adding this kind of overhang with some grass and it's also being supported by some stone stairs and slabs. At the front of this, we've also got some brooded dirt. We've got some glow berries and also some dripstone for some extra detail. Heading on inside, on the left here, we have our main storage area followed by our bedroom. To the right of this, we have our smelting section and then finally our crafting area over here. For the second starter base, we have the wooden variant. And this one is pretty similar to the previous one in that we have some crop fields out the front 
entrance and we've also got a pathway that leads up to our entrance. Heading on inside, I was a little bit lazy with this one. So there's nothing on the back wall, but on the left side, we have our crafting and some storage. And then on the right side, we have our smelting and some extra storage as well. Next up, we have a couple of mini indoor farm designs. This first one being a hydroponic kind of design, similar to the ones I've showcased previously. We've got pretty much the same design here with some polished andesite. Levers pointing in towards some end rods with some crops below. For the next one, we have a square kind of design. We've got a lantern that's hanging down and that's lighting up these crops surrounding it in kind of like a donut or square shape. For the next one, we actually have a automatic cactus farm. Obviously, this one is pretty small. We've only got two cactuses here, but over a long period of time of just being AFK, you will, of course, accumulate quite a lot of cactuses and this doesn't take up too much space as well. And for the final mini interior farm, we have a tiered design. This one is pretty cool. We've got some water that starts up top here and that actually flows down and powers these crops. Well, I say powers. It's not really powering, is it? And now, uh, yeah, that's flowing down to the bottom one as well. We've got some more crops down here too. Next up, we have a couple of water features. The first one here being a water fountain. Now, this one is a pretty cool and intricate design. We've got like this kind of circular shape around it to contain all of the water. Then in the center, we have this like big spike kind of design with some parts sticking out. The water up here is inside of a stone wall and that's kind of flowing around these stairs, which is like parting the water around all of these areas and flowing down. And yeah, looks pretty cool. For the next water feature, we have kind of like a modern design. I don't really know what else to call this, but the water obviously starts up here. It trickles down on both sides and down into the bottom. We've also got some sea lanterns in here as well, just to light up the water and make it look a little bit more modern, I guess. The next water feature is a little bit cooler than all of the other ones in that it's actually powering a whole bunch of crops. So on the sides here, we've got a couple of steps up so that we can actually like jump up to the crops and not destroy them in the process. And then as you can see, we have water here that flows into each one and that's coming up from this main water column up here. And yeah, just like a pretty cool little design for a crop farm. And for the final water feature, we just have a bit of a decorated pond. This is just a really neat design to add to your world. If you're living in like a swamp or something like that, or you just have a pond near you that you want to decorate. As you can see, we've just added some coarse dirt, rooted dirt and moss around the place. In the water as well, we've added some seagrass, some slabs and stairs as well as stones. And then some lily pads, sugar canes, azaleas around the place, and a big stone at the back here with a lantern on top, which is really cool. Next up, we have a couple of nether portal designs. This first one being the futuristic design. So for this one, we've got like a black outer ring around the nether portal inside. As you can see, it is a square and we've got this ring around it to kind of make it look more circular. And then we've also added a ring on the front as well with some sea lanterns and some buttons on top of those. And then we also have a nice staircase that leads up into it as well. For the next portal, we have the island portal. And this one is of course pretty simple. It's on a little mini island out here. We've also decorated it by adding in some custom palm trees and those are kind of like draping over the nether portal as well. For the next nether portal, we have probably one of my favorite ones that I've ever made and this one is the overgrown one. It needs a bit of a trim. I haven't been here in a while, so uh, forgive me. But yeah, this one's really cool. It's like in the side of like a cave or something like that. We've decorated the whole area with a whole bunch of mossy blocks, vines, glowberries, dripstones, rooted dirt, and just everything around the place. And then of course at the back, we have our massive nether portal. You kind of want to build this in a way so that the obsidian is hidden and not really seen from the outside and it gives this really cool look. Something as well that really makes this look awesome is that we have these holes in the walls as well where you can see the portal through and I just really like the way that looks. And for the final nether portal design, we have the ruined nether portal. Now, obviously the portal itself isn't ruined, but the structure that would have been containing it has been ruined. And it kind of also tells like this really cool story about it. Like the nether portal is like some kind of otherworldly thing that can't be destroyed, but the structure around it that was holding it can be destroyed and has been over time. So yeah, we've got like like these kind of four support pillars on the sides that have just corroded. We've got like a bunch of decoration blocks around the place as well and some lanterns. And we've also added some vines on top of the actual portal here as well. For the next build, we have an upgraded mineshaft bridge design. And I made this when the 1.18 update first came out. And this is kind of like my idea if they actually updated the mineshaft bridges and made them look a lot cooler. So yeah, for this bridge, obviously the vanilla bridges are simply just some planks that kind of go across and like have a little bit of support pillars, but I've actually added in a whole bunch of extra details around the place about it in these fences and fence gate designs. We've got some lanterns on top of those as well. And then we have these big pillars that go down to the actual bottom of the cave. And in here, we've got a bit of a pond with a waterfall that's actually leading into that as well. We've added some glowberries underneath the bridge as well. And also a whole bunch around the place. This is meant to be like a lush biome, but I actually custom made this whole area myself because I couldn't be asked to update to 1.18 when I first made this. And in the same vein as the last build, we actually have what would be my idea for an update to the mine shafts in vanilla Minecraft. So obviously vanilla mine shafts don't have an entrance down to them. And this would just be my idea to add in like a mine entrance. Imagine how cool it would be just kind of stumbling across one of these in the side of like a cliff or a mountain. And then just knowing that it leads down to a mine shaft. It would be a 
pretty cool thing to stumble across. And obviously we can just head down. As you guys know, I'm pretty lazy, so this doesn't go down really far. <laughs> this is obviously meant to go down like a lot further. But down here is also my take on what the mine shafts could look like on the inside. As you can see, we've added a whole bunch of decorations around the place. We've also changed up how the pillars look as well. We've added signs around them as like kind of support and also some fences and fence gates in between those. The minecart rails around the place as well are kind of like snaked around to give a bit more interesting look to them. We've also added some cracks in the ground as well using some stairs. And this leads down to what kind of would be the end of the mine shaft where we've got some ores and also some candles around the place as well. And then heading back here, as you can see, we actually have like a little crafting station set up in here as well, which would be a pretty cool thing to come across. It would be pretty useful as well. For the next build idea, we have my ultimate fishing dock. So this is the biggest and best fishing dock that I've made so far on my channel. Be sure to leave a comment if you want to see another fishing dock. I've made quite a few at this point, so I don't blame you if you don't want to see another one. But this one's pretty cool. We obviously have the main dock here that leads over this way where you can fish from. Then over here, we also have our docking area for our boat. We've got a bunch of aesthetic details around the place. We've got like a little crane design. We've got a boat underneath here and some barrels and chests tucked away underneath here as well. And then over here, we obviously have our kind of main building area. Over here would be like kind of the shop front. Then we can head inside and take a look at the interior. We've got some crafting blocks and storage blocks around the place. We've got some smokers for smoking your fish. And then we can head upstairs up the ladder into where we have our bedroom and some storage blocks as well. And then out onto our balcony where we've got a little bit more storage and just a pretty cool view as well. Next up, we have our Subnautica style base. And this is probably one of my favorite underwater bases I've ever made as it looks really cool. So firstly, taking a look around the exterior, as you can see, we have these pipes that kind of lead down and just kind of head deeper into the ocean. I've obviously stopped it here because I'm a lazy bastard. On the outside as well, we've also got this nice light design. We've got a couple of details on the outside as well with like these kind of vault door entrance things. I don't really know what they're supposed to do, but they just kind of look cool. Then taking a look on the inside of the base, as you can see, this room is kind of like our storage and crafting area. We've also got a whole bunch of hallways that kind of lead between all of the rooms. Yes, most of them are empty because I am lazy. And then that also leads over to this room here, which is like kind of our indoor farm section. If you want to see this base fully fleshed out and made into a tutorial video, be sure to let me know in the comments. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of aesthetic starter farms. So these builds, unlike most of the others, are actually pretty useful for your survival world. And this first one being the fully automatic sugarcane farm. And I will just quickly say all of these starter farm designs have their own tutorial video, so be sure to check that out as well. See, so yeah, I won't really go too much into how this one is made, but it is pretty simple and easy to build. It's just the bog standard sugarcane farm. We've got our minecart with a hopper underneath that, kind of just bouncing back and forth, and that all leads into this chest as well. The main cool thing about this is that it's actually in like a really nice looking shell. Instead of just being this exposed, weird looking farm, it's kind of like this cohesive building. For the next aesthetic farm, we have the cactus farm. Now, similar to the previous one, this one has a really cool house that it's actually made into. I really love the roof design on this. It's probably one of my favorites. And yeah, on the inside, we of course just have a pretty standard cactus farm. These cactuses grow into the side of these fences, which makes it pop off and down into the water and into our chest down below. And now for the final aesthetic starter farm, we have the gold slash XP farm. And this one is actually a very, very useful design for the early game. And I'll show you exactly how it works right now. So we can head on inside through one of the doors at the back here, close the door behind us and head up the ladder. Now up here, we just need to grab a bow and arrow and then just snipe any of these zombie piglins around the place. Uh... Okay, so yeah, now we can snipe one of these. We can head back down real quick and I can show you how this works. So all of these piglins think that these open trap doors are solid blocks and they all just fall on down like the dumb idiots they are. Look at all of them. Yeah, so we've got a whole bunch here, as you can see. All you have to do now is just head down, grab out a sword that I don't have and you just punch them. This is where you can collect your XP as well. And then underneath this, we have a whole bunch of hoppers that would collect all of their items as well. For the next build, we have the crop fields. And this one is a very, very simple build to make and it looks really cool as well. So we simply just have these giant squares of crops around the place where we've got some dirt path in between all of those. We've also added a bunch of fence posts and some lights on top of those around the place and some grass as well. Now, as you can see, I haven't really added too many to this area and uh, you can, of course, just expand this as large as you want. And also be sure to break them up by using different crops between them and also add in some maybe different farms as well, like this tree farm. You could also add in melons and pumpkin farms as well. And back here, you could also add in a little house design too. Now, this build is pretty old, so... So yeah, this house looks pretty shit. So obviously you can do a lot better than this. Like what the hell is going on over here, man? Holy crap. Get me away from that. What the hell? But yeah, this would be a really cool way to lay out your farms for your survival world. Next up, we have a villager torture chamber. Now, I don't really know why you'd want to build this, but I uh, just thought I'd add it in because a lot of people liked this for some reason. But yeah, so over on the left side here, we have our villagers that have bad trades that we've locked up and they're kind of in these suspended cages that are hanging from the roof. Down here, we have my favorite torture method, which uh, I guess 
guess you can probably imagine what this does and how it feels. Over here we have the stretching rack. As you can see, this is the thing that you'd turn to like stretch them out. Then on this pole right here, we have our various torture tools. We've also got some water buckets over here for some waterboarding and stuff like that. We've also got some more torture tools over here. We've got a drain down here as well to drain away any uh, fluids that might come out of our victims. And then over on the right side here, we have like a hanging rack thing and also some villagers that are actually hanging from some chains as well. And now for the final build, we have these floating gardens. And this is actually based on an ancient farming method, which is really cool. They used to build up these artificial islands in the middle of lakes and dams and stuff like that. And then they'd put their crops on top of those. So this is kind of my take on it in Minecraft. As you can see, we've kind of got the islands in the center here. And then these are all supported by these logs and stuff around the place. We've also got a nice water channel in between all of these so that our farmers can sail in between them. And then we've also added some extra decorations with some leaves on top of fences as well. And yeah, so that covers all 30 plus build ideas showcased in this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as it helps me out a lot more than you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.